Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Counting Bits. It's an easy, we're going to jump right into it. Given an integer n, return an array answer of length n plus 1 such that for each i, an i is going to be in the range of 0 and n. Answer of i is the number of ones in the binary representation of i. So example 1, we have n equaling 2, so we're returning an array of length 3. And it's going to range from 0 to n, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2. And it's representing the number of ones we have of those indices. So in index 0, we're representing number 0. And 0 in binary has 0 ones. 1 has just 1 1, and 2 has 1 1 as well. What about 5? So of course, the first three numbers will say the same, 0, 1, 1. And 3 has 2 ones, 4 has 1 1, and 5 has 2 ones. Now, a follow-up. It's very easy to come up with a solution with a runtime of n log n. Can you do it in linear O of n and possibly in a single pass? And can we do it without any built-in function? Okay, yes. So first, what is the n log n solution? The n log n approach, well, that would be going through every single n that we have, every single number, and converting that number into binary. We can do that in log base 2 of n time because, again, we're converting it into binary. And we would just loop through counting the number ones we have in that binary representation to get our final answer. We're going to do this for n numbers, so our time complexity would be n log n. But we want to do better. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using dynamic programming to build up our answer. OK, so I want to do better than n log n time and potentially do this in a single pass. What I'm going to do is make use of dynamic programming. So if I had 4, the binary representation of 4 is 1, 0, 0. To get to 5, all I'm going to do is add 1 to that, right? So my binary representation for 5 is 1, 0, 1. And I have two ones instead of the one I had in 4. What about 6? Six in binary is one, one, zero. And this also has two ones, the same as five. So our logic sort of breaks down here. We can't just add one more one as we increase our numbers. But is there something else that we can spot here? And remember, we're in binary, so we're building numbers off of each other. So there definitely should be some sort of pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and write down all the numbers from zero to 20 in binary and the number of ones that we have there just to see if we notice anything. So all the numbers in binary are written over here. We have 0 to 20, their binary representations, and the number of ones that we have. Now, to start off, the first number is going to be 0, so it's all zeros, and we have 0 ones. What about 1? 1 is going to have a singular 1 in the ones digit. And what about 2? Well, 2 also just has the 1 1, because all we did is we took what we had in one and shifted it over by a digit, right? This is because we are in binary. So every time we have a two multiplier, every time we double, we just take our numbers and we shift. This is the same as say being in base 10, going from 10 to 100. It's still that one, one that we have that's been shifted. And it doesn't matter what number we use. If we have 53, if we do a 10 multiplier, it would go to 530. So it's the same digits just shifted over. And in base 2, whenever we do a 2 multiplier on any number, we'll see the same pattern happening. In 3, we have two ones. We have 1, 1. And when we multiply 3 by 2, we get 6, right? So we have 1, 1, 0 for 6, also just two ones. It doesn't matter what number we look at. This will always hold true. For 7, for example, we have three ones over here. If I multiply this by 2, 14. It's still the three ones with an added zero at the end. So it's still three zeros. What this means is that any number that's been doubled will have the same number of ones as that number halved. So that basically means any even number that we see, we know how to get the number of ones for it. So for two, we would just look at one because two divided by two is one and it would have the same number of ones. And same with four and eight. Same number of ones, 8 and 16, same number of ones. If we look at 10 and 5, same number of ones. Again, it's just all shifted. So we know how to do all the evens. What about the odds? Well, for the odds, all we have to do is add 1. All the evens end in 0 and all the odds end in 1 because all we're doing is we're taking that previous number and adding 1 to it. 
So we had zero ones and now we have one one. That last bit that was a zero in two because remember we shifted over, so we shifted over and add a zero. We're changing that zero to a one for the odds. So to go from two to three, of course we shifted over one when we got, went from one to two. We're just changing this to be a one. So instead of one zero, we're gonna have two. Same with six and seven, right? It was one one zero, seven is just one one one. So it has three ones instead of two. And if we look at 10 and 11, the same thing holds true. So what we're gonna do is for our even numbers, we're gonna check the number of ones in our numbers divided by two. And for our odds, we're gonna check the number before us and just add one to that. So to code all of this up, the first thing I'm gonna do is initialize a result array, which is gonna have a zero for that first element. And now I'm going to loop through. So for i in range one to n plus one, because we already covered that zero with index, we wanna start from one and we wanna to go to n plus one. I'm gonna append to result what the index halved has. So result of i divided by two. And if this is an even, I'm going to add zero once to that. I'm just gonna copy paste whatever I have in that resulting number over there. But if it's odd, I'm going to add a one. So all I need to do is check if I am an even or odd index. So I'm gonna do i mod two. And whatever I get from here is what I'm gonna append to result. At the end, all I have to do is return result. So let's go ahead and run this code. It's accepted and now we can go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted as well. So before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example just to see how this is actually going to work. Say n equals five, what are we gonna do? Well, first our result is just gonna hold a zero. Now we go in this loop over here. So i is now going to be one. Result.append i divided by two. So that's gonna be zero. So I'm going to check what I have at the zeroth index, which is zero. And I'm going to add whether or not I am even or odd. So I is one, which is odd. So one mod two, what is the remainder I get when I divide myself by two? That's one. So zero plus one is going to be one. And I append that to my result. So I append one over here, which is true, right? One has just the one, one. Now I'm back in this loop and I is now two. Well, what is two divided by two? That is one. So I look over here and I have one, one over here. Now I want to add what this is. So two mod two is going to be zero. So one plus zero is one. And I append to result one. Now I go to three, three divided by two. And remember this is integer division. So that is going to be one. I look over here. So that is one plus what is three mod two? The remainder I get when I divide three by two is one. So it's gonna be one plus one, which is two. And I go ahead and append that. And you can see that we are just building this out. Once I get to four, I see what was in index two and that's the one over here. And I'm even, so I'm gonna be adding zero. So four also has one, one. And five, we look at five divided by two. So that's gonna be two. And now I'm just going to add one to that. So that is going to be two as well. And finally, I will return this resulting array and it's exactly what we expect. So we just went ahead and solved counting bits. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.